This is green, this is red, and this is blue. But how can you tell what you're seeing as blue is the exact same thing as what I see as blue? We've named the colors to give us a way to communicate and reference them. But in reality, there's no way of knowing what you see is the same as what another person sees. Even with the small steps and the giant leaps we've made as a species, there's still a lot to learn about Earth, life, and the human condition. There's still everything we don't know. On the 26th of February, 2015, one picture of a dress divided the internet. You are seeing white and gold. Where are you looking at? I, I oh, it just changed to white and gold! <laughs> Wait, no, you're kidding. While some saw it as gold and white, others saw it as blue and black. And ever since then, there's been a number of repetitions of the same experiment, either using the same sense, in this case sight, or even other senses, like hearing in the famous Yanni or Laurel debate. Laurel. These experiments remind us that there's no way for us to tell that you and I sense the same things. What I call red might just be what you call blue, and there might be someone out there who sees human beings with purple teeth, but just refers to it as white. 71% of the entire Earth is covered by water. Humans are made up of about 60% water. Potatoes, 80%. Watermelons, 93%. And cucumbers, 95%. It's very clear that water is essential for life on Earth. But we really don't know that much about water. Not even about the very oceans we came from. In fact, we've only explored 5-10% to of the Earth's oceans. The rest? Well, who knows what's down there? It's even scarier when you realize that fish, like the blobfish and the barreled eye fish, belong to the slim percent of things that we've already discovered. The deeper you go, the crazier things seem to get. What's at the bottom of the ocean? For the most part, we just don't know. But back on the surface, countries that are bordered by water use something called coastlines to mark their territory. The coast is the land along the sea, and the boundary between the coast and the sea is known as a coastline. So, how long is the US coastline, or any other coastline in the world? The answer is… well again, we don't really know. Coastlines constantly curve and cut in and out. Even the smallest deviations from a straight line can add distance, and over time, these small distances add up. Some of these features are massive, like bays, while others are minuscule. Now, measuring each and every little crevice isn't really efficient, so surveyors cut corners and straighten rough edges into easily manageable lines. If you do a quick Google search of the measurement of any coastline, you'll find a lot of different answers. They all cut corners, just differently. Humanity as a species though, well we've done really well for ourselves. When in a pinch, we invent something to push us through. We made clothes when the weather was harsh. Shelter so we could be safe from wildlife to rest and recuperate. Weapons to hunt for food. Money to replace pure bartering. But what about fire? Was fire a discovery or an invention? And music? Music has been described by scientists as a relatively recent invention by humans. It's believed that music helped our ancestors to bring together a close-knit community. But did humans really invent music? Or did we just discover that certain sounds sound nice with other sounds? Birds sing, whales sing, even tree frogs have a nice rich baritone sometimes. So can we really say man invented music? If we did, then what is the true definition of music? I guess we'll never know. On the list of man's greatest inventions has to be tools. In fact, for a really long time, scientists were pretty sure that this is exactly what made us human. We were the only animals who, through the use of such a variety of tools, were able to expand and grow so quickly. Except, we aren't the only ones who use tools. A lot of animals, mainly primates, use tools for all kinds of reasons. A study by Jane Goodall on African chimpanzees would change the definition of man forever. In the research, it was discovered that these chimpanzees use tools to gather food, brush their teeth, and even more. So in response, would this mean we must now redefine man, or redefine tool? They use tools for the exact same things we would. Do we accept chimpanzees as human? Well, of course not. This begs the question. If using tools doesn't, then what makes us human? In the same research, 
It was also discovered that chimps had individual personalities and were capable of rational thoughts like emotions and sorrow. They gave pats on the back, hugs, kisses, and even just messed around with each other just for fun. They developed affectionate bonds with family members and with other members of the community, and some of these bonds lasted for over 50 years. If emotions, rational thought, and affectionate actions do not, then what makes us human? In the past, it was thought that humans were the only animals who were self-aware. However, in the past 30 years, extensive research has proven that many other animals are too. In fact, in 2012, a group of neuroscientists created the Cambridge Declaration on Consciousness, which states that humans are not unique in possessing the neurological substrates that generate consciousness. Non-human animals, including all mammals and birds, and many other creatures, also possess these neural substrates. If consciousness, sentience, wakefulness, and the ability to feel and experience do not, then what makes us human? We really just don't know. All we know is that one day we weren't, today we are, and one day we will be no more. We don't know what happened before we existed, and neither do we know what will happen after we die. If a person dies and comes back to life, it's referred to as a near-death experience, because we see death as a finality. But what if it isn't? What if one of the beliefs of humanity's many religions is true? Even the Earth itself can be very weird, and sometimes you just see formations that make no sense. Like who built Stonehenge and why? The same goes for the pyramids. Some people think the gods of Egypt made the pyramids, others are convinced it was made by human effort. But, in reality, we just don't know. The human mind is everything. All of man's greatest inventions, theories, and discoveries have all come from a human mind. We first conceive of an idea in our mind before we can ever create it in the real world. But perhaps, we don't yet know or understand exactly how powerful the mind can be. The placebo effect gives us a glimpse. I made an entire video about the placebo effect, but basically, Doctors appear to give a patient treatment, but in actuality, they don't. However, this fake treatment registers in the brain, perceives it as real, and kickstarts the healing process. Basically, the mind heals the body because it thinks the body is getting treatment, even if it isn't. In research on social, cognitive, and effective neuroscience, it was discovered that self-affirmation helps to maintain a positive self-view and helps to restore your self-confidence and self-worth. Simply by telling yourself nice things, it is indeed possible for your mind to convince your brain and body that you are those things. And these are just the things we know the mind is capable of. Think about everything we don't know. There are a lot of things we know about animals. Dogs are sweet and loving, cats can have an attitude, and the lion is apparently the king of the jungle, even if it lives in a savanna. Not everything makes sense, and we really don't know as much as we think we do. Going to space is one of man's greatest achievements. However, what space exploration has clearly shown us is just how small we are in the grand scheme of things. There are at least 2,500 other solar systems that have been discovered, but that number could go up to the tens of billions. We just can't know for sure. That's just in our galaxy, the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is just one of billions of galaxies that are out there. It's so incredibly massive that you just can't help but think, are we alone in the universe? And if we aren't, why hasn't anyone said hi? We have ideas, but as always, we don't know, and we really can't prove most things. A very fundamental question for nature is, what exactly is the universe made of, and why is there stuff in it to begin with? We know that almost all matter is made up from indivisible atoms, but why? Why do atoms exist, and where do they come from? When we die, what exactly do those atoms become? Everything else? At this point, you've listened to me talk for about 7-8 minutes. Time is persistent. For everything with mass, time never stops. We all know that yesterday is in the past, today is the present, and tomorrow is the future. But what exactly is time, and where does it come from? Even more confusing is, did humans discover or invent time? There are so many things about the world that we just don't know, and while some are deep questions like we've talked about, others are more, well, trivial. While watching the video of this person yawning, you probably also yawned, 
So even more importantly, why is yawning contagious? When we're happy, we laugh. When we're sad, we cry. But why? For a long time, it was believed that laughter was a social tool to show one another that we're enjoying what's currently happening. It was an evolution tool used to help enhance connectivity in societies. But if that was the case, then laughter should be unique to us humans, or at least primates. But it's not. Other social animals like dolphins and even rats laugh. So why do we laugh? Also, why do we cry? It's as if crying has emotional healing powers. Crying activates our parasympathetic nervous system and helps return our bodies to a normal, fully functional state. It's a good thing for your body, so why do we associate it with such sad things? We often cry after something bad has happened, not really while it's happening. Is it a process that evolves solely for our brains to process emotionally painful things? Then again, we cry for happy reasons as well, so scratch everything I just said. Why are some people right-handed and others are left-handed? Why isn't everyone ambidextrous? Wouldn't that have made a lot more sense? We can have theories for many, many things, but they remain just that. Theories. In actuality, proving theories as a fact of nature is a lot harder than you'd think. Many scientific theories are superseded with time, considered obsolete, or simply wrong. We used to think that Earth was the center of the universe. Then one day, we realized it wasn't. Then again, not everyone could accept the fact that their view of the universe was so wrong. I mean, there's a theory that as recently as World War II, the Germans attempted some advances under the impression that the Earth was hollow. So it is very possible that mostly everything we do know about the world right now is wrong. Honestly, it probably is. We simply don't know everything about everything. And that's okay. All we can do is keep asking questions and keep learning about the world around us trying to uncover each of its mysteries one stone at a time, hopefully answering the most important question of them all. What does existence truly mean? This video has taught you that, well, we don't really know a lot of things. So much happens in our daily lives, there's so much information there, but every day that goes by shows me more and more about how little I know about almost everything. Now, a lot of things I covered in this video don't really qualify as essential information. Like knowing exactly who built Stonehenge would be really interesting, but at the end of the day, they're just some rocks. However, knowing about the current state of the world economy would probably prove to be a lot more useful in your daily life. With Morning Brew, you can stay up to date with business news in just 5 minutes a day. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter that gets sent out Monday through Saturday every week. For the past week, I've been looking through their newsletters while I drink my coffee in the morning, and I've been learning quite a bit. There's been a lot of talk about NFTs lately, and if you don't know what those are, well, there's a video on the way for that. If you're not super into reading or watching the news, Morning Brew is great for you. It's quick, concise, and not painfully boring, which makes it a lot easier to get through. If you're into tech, business, or finance, I highly suggest you check out Morning Brew. If you're interested, click the link at the top of the description and subscribe to Morning Brew today. It takes less than 15 seconds to do, and for 5 minutes of your time a day, you'll definitely become a more informed person. You'll be staying up to date with the world and supporting my channel at the same time.